G'day McGrathletes, welcome back to another episode of Maths with McGrathematics. Today we are starting a new topic in the Year 12 Extension 1 course. Uh, I'm going to do a couple quick videos on mathematical induction. Today's a bit of an intro and then next video will be um, different kinds of applications of induction. Alright, today we're just looking at an introduction to proof by mathematical induction, showing you all the steps and a few quick examples to give you a bit of a leg up in how to actually prove things using mathematical induction and what it is. All right, let's um, stop rambling like I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's get into it. We're gonna start off by talking about a number pattern. And if you are uh, incredibly gifted, maybe you can see what the pattern is here and um, post in the comments and I'll just believe that you did it before. I revealed the answer. First one is the natural numbers summed up to three. So one plus two plus three is equal to six. If you add up all the counting numbers up to five, you get 15. If you do it up to 10, you get 55. And if you do it all the way up to 20, you get 210. So the question for the viewers today is, can you see a link between the last number in the string, 3, 5, 10, 20, and the total sum, 6, 15, 55, uh, 210? All right, there is a pattern here that allows you to get from the last number to the total sum in, um, in, a, in a shorter method than doing a lot of addition with a pen or a calculator. Pause the video, have a think if you want to. Otherwise, I'm about to spoil it because I want to crack on and get this done before the bell goes. Okay, the shortcut is actually, you take the last number in the string, 3, 5, 10, and 20. You multiply them by the next number, which would be 4, 6, 11, and 21. And then you halve that answer. So I'll show you what I mean. 3 times 4 is 12. Half of 12 is 6. 5 times 6 is 30. Half of 30 is 15. So anyway, my theory is that if you want to add up all the counting numbers up to n, um, the shortcut you can use is the number n multiplied by the next number, n plus 1, and divided by 2. Now, this is a theory that I want to check whether it works for every single positive counting number. What I have here is four examples that it works for, but I don't know for sure that it works for every single number until I prove it. And one way we can prove this, uh, this statement is by doing a thing called induction. It's a three-step process. We're going to go through that right now. Okay, for the first step of proving the statement, we are going to show that it works for the first initial value in the string. So we're setting n equal to 1 on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation and showing that it works. So when n is equal to 1, on the left, we add up all the numbers up to 1, which is just 1. On the right, we have 1 times 1 plus 1 divided by 2. So we end up with 1 times 2 divided by 2. The right-hand side turns into 1, and so we get left-hand side equal to right-hand side and so the equation holds true for the first value. That is step one complete. Okay, for step two, we're gonna be doing a bit of assuming. Step two is we are going to assume that at some points in this string of numbers up to n, there is some number k that the equation holds true for. Okay, we've shown, it it shows, we've shown that it, it uh, works for one. We're going to assume that it works for an arbitrary number in the string of integers, which we're calling k. So here is our assumption. We are assuming that when we set n equal to k, the equation holds true. And that's step two, which is the easiest part. You've just got to rewrite the question, but change the n's to k's, and now you're ready for step three. Step three is where we use this assumption to try and show that the expression works for the next number along in the string, which is when n is equal to k plus one. Okay, so step two, done. Step three, prove true for the next number, k plus one, using our assumption. And the thing at the top here is the assumption that we wrote down in part two. Okay, here it is, setting um, k equal to k plus 1, or we're setting n equal to k plus 1. So the last string in the sum is now k plus 1. Our fraction is now k plus 1 multiplied by k plus 1 plus 1. All right, that's going to simplify to k plus 1 k times k plus 2 on the right. And it's really useful to note that in the left-hand side, because you're adding all the numbers up to k plus 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up, the very second last number in the string before the k plus 1 will be a k because every time you go to the left, you're stepping down by 1. So if this is k plus 1, this is k. All right, that's really important because uh, the left-hand side, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus bloody bloody blah, blah, this is all equal to our assumption, which is k times k plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, so we're substituting in our assumption for the left-hand side plus the k plus 1. Everything summed up to k is equal to k times k plus 1 divided by 2. So we're going to chuck that in here over on the left-hand side. Okay, left-hand side, I've changed the blue bit to be that blue bit. 
Now our goal is to show that this right-hand side can be expressed as the right-hand side, which is k plus 1 times k plus 2 over 2. All right, so the way we're going to do that is we are going to combine these two by turning the second term into a fraction. So we're going to write k plus 1 as 2 times k plus 1 over 2. Okay, so just rewriting the expression as a fraction divided by 2. Now we have common denominators and we can add together our tops. So we're going to get k times k plus 1 plus 2 times k plus 1. Uh, you can expand you can expand here, but it is actually quicker to factorize because you have a common factor of k plus 1 here and here. If we factor out the k plus 1, we're left with k plus 2 in our second bracket, which was the target. So we have shown that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. All right. Therefore, by the principle of mathematical induction, the statement is true for all integers n greater than or equal to 1. Okay. When you've done all three steps, the statement is proven true. All right. The first step is showing n equals 1 works. Second step is assuming n equals k works. And then third step is proving that n equals k plus 1 works. Okay, so a quick summary. The three steps we're going to be doing in today's examples. First step is show for the first value that it works. Second step, like I said, assume for n equals k, the equation holds true. And then last step, prove that n equals k plus 1 works. And to do this, you need to use your assumption from part 2. All right, also good manners is to write a concluding statement at the end and say, therefore, true by the principle of mathematical induction. doesn't need to be a long essay, but you should always conclude that you have proven the statement true using induction for it to be a fully rounded proof. So not sure if it's something that will lose you a mark, but let's not gamble on that. Let's just always write a little statement at the end, wrap it up before we go on to the uh, next problem. Okay, let's do a more complicated example to get a better idea of how these proofs work. We've got um, 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared up to n squared is equal to 1 sixth n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. All right, let's go through our steps. First step is show that it works for n equals 1. So when n equals 1, we have 1 squared. On the right, we have 1 sixth times 1 times 2 times 3. All right, if n is 1, this is 2 and this is 3. Left hand side is 1 and the right hand side is 1 sixth times 6, which is equal to 1. So it does work when n equals 1. True for n equals 1. Step 2. Now we are going to assume that when n equals k, uh, the statement holds true. This is our assumption. We are assuming this works and then um, we're going to use this to prove that the next step works. All right, now letting n equal to k plus 1. So rather than changing this k squared to a k plus 1 squared, I recommend just writing in the next term and the next term is k plus 1 squared. So you have the left hand side of your assumption adding in the next term as k plus 1 squared. Now on the right hand side, wherever you see a k, we're going to replace it with a k plus 1. So here, um, k plus 1 turns into k plus 2 and this 2k turns into a 2 times k plus 1. Okay, cool. Now we're going to attempt to prove this. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to substitute our assumption into our left hand side. So left-hand side, we can see 1 plus 2 squared plus 3 squared all the way up to k squared. We can substitute this as 1 sixth of k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1. So it looks like this. Okay, left-hand side, but everything up to the k squared I've changed to be the right-hand side of our assumption. All right, now we've just got to do a bunch of sick, hectic algebra to try and make this expression here look like this here. So it's going to be a lot of factorizing and expanding and stuff. So... What can we do first? I'm seeing two terms and I'm seeing both terms have a common factor of k plus 1. So why don't we factor k plus 1 out the front? Taking k plus 1 out of both terms, we have 1 sixth k times 2k plus 1 in the front part. In the second part, we're left with one of the k plus 1s. Okay, now if we expand and simplify inside the big brackets, we're going to end up with a little, after we do a sneaky rearrangement, we're going to end up with uh, 2k squared on 6 at the front and then k over 6 here, and then just plus k plus 1. Simplifying further, we're going to write um, k over 6 plus k, and remember we can think of k as 6 over 6. Putting these together, we end up with 7k over 6, and I'm actually also going to write 1 as 6 over 6. The reason I did that, and the reason I didn't simplify the fraction at the start, is that I actually want all three of these terms to be fractions over 6, because looking at my target, I actually want a 1 sixth at the front so now I have a 1 sixth in all three parts of the inside of this bracket. So now I can just factor 1 sixth after I move it up. Now I can factor 1 sixth out the front like this. And that leaves me with 2k squared 
7K and 6 inside the bracket. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we just need to factorize this non-monic trinomial. I'm not gonna do the full working out, but I do have videos on that if you need help on how to factorize expressions like this. But when you factorize it, we should get k plus two and two k plus three. And two k plus three, that can be written as two times k plus one plus one. When you expand this and add the one, you end up with two k plus three. Anyway, it works out. We can successfully make the left-hand side of the expression equal to the right-hand side. And so therefore we have proven the expression true uh, using the principle of mathematical induction. So there's a little wrap up. Doesn't need to be significantly more glamorous than that. As long as you mention principle of mathematical induction or you can use the acronym POMI, um, yeah, it's gonna make your marker a little bit happier that you've actually wrapped up and you know how to structure a formal proof, I suppose. Okay, that was pretty hectic. Um, let's try another one. This one's a bit more mild. Um, and if the last two made at least some sense to you and you're feeling confident, I encourage you to pause the video and have a go at this one by yourself. See how far through the three steps you can get. Um, otherwise, you just want to watch me watch it. No, sorry, you want to watch me do it. And um, you're in luck. I'm about to do it right now. Step one, show true for n equal to one. So on the left-hand side, we have eight times one minus three, which is going to get us our first term, which is five. So you didn't actually need to sub that in really. Over on the right, we got one times four times one plus one. So we have one times five. So we get five on the left. We get five on the right, so therefore it is true. The statement holds true when n is equal to one. Now we start making an ass out of you and me by doing some assuming. So we're going to assume that the expression holds true when n is equal to k. Now we're going to attempt to use that assumption to show that when n is equal to k plus one, it holds true. So once again, just writing the left-hand side of the assumption, just writing the next term in the series, which is eight times k plus one minus three. Okay, it's the same thing but I've changed the k to a k plus one. Over on the right, k plus one here and k plus one here. All right, now we start doing some proofing stuff. All right, up top is our uh, expression for our assumption. We can substitute this on the left-hand side of our, of our attempted proof that we're trying to show. So five plus 13, blah, 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 up to eight k minus three. That's all equivalent to k times four k plus one. So we can just chuck that in there. Um, oh, sorry, I just did a little bit of tidying up first. This can tidy up to 8k plus 5, and this right-hand side can tidy up to 4k plus 5. That's going to make our end goal a little bit easier to meet, but we're still doing the same stuff. Okay, left-hand side, everything up to the 8k minus 3, like I said, is going to become k times 4k plus 1. Um, and then we have the 8k plus 5 on the end. And now we're going to try and make it look like this. So let's do some expanding and then collecting and then factorizing. We get 4k squared plus k plus 8k plus 5. That works out to be 4k squared plus 9k plus 5. So once again, we are factorizing a non-monic trinomial. If you are not fantastic at factorizing non-monic trinomials, I suggest you fix that because um, it's an important part of a lot of mathematical induction proofs. So have a video on my channel if you need more help. But yeah, you need to try and get comfortable with factorizing expressions like this if you want to attempt mathematical induction in extension 1. So... Um, yeah, maybe some study for some of you. All right, if you do factorize it correctly, we end up with k plus one times four k plus five, uh, which is equal to the right-hand side. And so job done, left-hand side equal to right-hand side. Therefore true, did I write therefore true? <gasps> I didn't, oh my God, I'm so bad. You should have written therefore true by primary blah, 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 conclude. Do as I say, not as I do. Learn from my mistakes. Okay, finishing off with an HSC question from 2020. It's a band three, so it's not, not meant to be super strenuous, but um, it's always easy to get at least a mark or two in induction because the first two steps are piss easy. It's only the third step where um, it'll start to ruin your life. Let's see how we go with this one. Showing for n greater than or equal to one. Here's our expression. Uh, let's dive right in. As always, pause, have a go if you want to, but if you don't want to, I can't make you. So time for you to grow up and make your own decisions. All right. First of all, when n is equal to one, the left-hand side is going to be one times three minus one. The right-hand side is gonna be one squared times one plus one. So on the left, we have one times two. And on the right, we have one times two. So, oh my God, two is equal to two. It works. Step one, complete. True for n equals one. Now we get very assumptious and we say, I betcha if I take the question and I change the n's to k's, it's gonna be true. And then if that's true, I can use that to prove that the next part is true. And that assumption is correct. So we're rewriting the question. 
If you want to save a bit of time, you don't always have to write the entire question. You can cut out a little bits in the middle like I did because I'm lazy. That's our assumption. Let's see if we can use that to... That was a bad transition. Um, okay, let's see if we can use that to prove for n equal to k plus 1. So setting the left-hand side and writing the next term, which is going to be k plus 1 here and k plus 1 here. Looks like that. All right, next term in the series. Over on the right-hand side, we're changing the k squared to be a k plus 1 squared and changing the k plus 1 to be a k plus 2. Okay, now we're going to rip in and um, simplify the left-hand side. Once again, everything up until the k times 3k minus 1. This was our assumption, and in our assumption, we assumed that that was equal to k squared times k plus 1. So everything on the left here, I can just write k squared times k plus 1. Then on the end, I have k plus 1, and then if you expand and simplify 3 times k plus 1 minus 1, you end up with uh, 3k plus 2. Okay, now our goal is to make this look like the right-hand side. Actually, not too tricky because both terms have a common factor of, of k plus 1. We can factor the common term out the front. That's going to leave us with k squared at the start and then 3k plus 2 at the end. And now this is a very friendly um, factorizable trinomial. We just need to think of two numbers that add to 3 and multiply to 2, and that is 2 and 1. So we get k plus 1, k plus 1, k plus 2, two k plus ones grouped together to make a k plus one squared and that is the right hand side and so boom true for all n greater than or equal to one by the principle of mathematical induction okay so same three steps every time step one piece of piss step two kind of annoying i was always in high school like why do i have to change the letters but trust me it is important step two just writing stuff down step three is where you just play around with it use as much algebra as humanly possible to try and make the left hand side look like the right hand side as long as you sub in the assumption correctly and you know how to expand and factorize a lot of these are going to be very achievable all right and if they don't you just always write some nonsense working out and then you just write the answer and you just hope that your marker believes that you got there this is called fudging it's a very advanced technique i was an expert in high school anyway hopefully that gave you a good start on how to approach proofs by mathematical induction if you're looking for a more challenging one here is a band four from the 2021 hsc it's a bit more scary looking, but it is doable. So if you like a challenge, um, pause it and see if you can prove the left-hand side equal to right-hand side using induction. Otherwise, if you have a massive focus textbook lying around, these questions could be of good use to you. But that's all from me for this week. And I hope you found some value out of that and I made your brain a little bit more juicy. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Love maths. Love you. See you later.